In fact, I used to go to so many networking events that we ended up running our own networking events in Shoreditch on the rooftop of our offices, which if I do say so myself, were pretty good. In this video, I'm going to tell you why networking is a complete waste of your time and what you should be doing instead. There is one thing which some of the most successful entrepreneurs and brands in the world spend a lot of time doing, and it is not networking. Now, early on in my entrepreneurial career, I was an avid networker. I would go to networking events two to three times a week. I would spend hours and hours traveling all around London and the country to get to these events. So with my trusty briefcase and business cards in hand, I could try and drum up some more business. In fact, I used to go to so many networking events that we ended up running our own networking events in Shoreditch on the rooftop of our offices, which if I do say so myself, were pretty good. But after years and years of networking, I came to realize that there were three fundamental problems with this piece of advice that entrepreneurs are given day in, day out which is to network. The first problem is that networking is transactional. I mean it is purely transactional. For anyone who's been to a networking event whether it was yesterday or yesteryear, I mean it becomes a game of who can sell to who fastest, most effective within that environment. You're in a space where you might have 5, 10, 50 entrepreneurs who are all seemingly trying to do the same thing. People are there as CEOs doing founder-led sales, or you might be the salesperson or business development person in your organization, and you are tasked with going to a number of networking events so that you could lead generate and hopefully turn those leads into business. The problem with all of that though, is that everyone at the networking event is trying to do the same thing. So it becomes the salesman trying to sell to salesman, CEO trying to sell to CEO, and really that doesn't work. Now, there might be the odd occasion where you as the salesperson may require a product or service from someone else, or you might know someone who does. Similarly, if you are the chief exec, then you are probably looking for products and services that can help your business. But really, do you want to be sold to over cheese and wine within a five minute segment in a networking event? Probably not. So this roundabout of networking that usually happens can be quite exhausting, and it really isn't sustainable for most business owners. So what do you do instead? Now, a level up from networking, and for those who do go to these types of events, they will say that we're not networking, we are relationship building, which suggests that it's non-transactional and that the value in that interaction is the relationship. But in developing that relationship, and I've done it as well, you might go to one of these events and the idea is that you will do something for someone. So when they are in need of the product or service that you have to offer, that you are then top of mind. The problem with that is that it's quite random and you're relying on the goodwill of someone to essentially do you a favor or to refer you, which in some cases doesn't sound like a bad idea, but it's not something that can really grow exponentially and you don't have control over it. My second realization is that actually in these environments, the problem is most people who go to a networking environment, you don't know each other from a can of paint. And in order for you to have the trust and credibility built up for you to then refer someone else's product or service, you kind of need to know them. So this idea that it's not personal, it's business, business is absolutely personal. And it took me a number of years to figure out that people do business with people they like. Now I'm sure, like myself, many of you would have bought from somebody not because of the price point and not necessarily because they had the best product or service but because you liked them. So you can think about your local barber or hairdresser or plumber or accountant or solicitor. For the most part you could argue that you could find a better service provider for almost anything that you do. But often when we are going through the decision making process as to whether or not we're going to buy from them we are looking at even if it's unconsciously whether or not we like that person. And then on a macro scale, businesses and brands put millions of pounds into trying to make their brands more likable by attaching influencers to their brands so that you like them more. You don't necessarily like the brand more, but you like them because they're attached to somebody or something that you really love. I remember being part of a pitch session with a colleague of mine when we were doing some work with WPP, who were one of the biggest advertising agencies in the world, actually biggest advertising groups in the world. And when they were giving feedback to the businesses that were pitching, they said one of the things that they consider 
when they are about to award a contract is whether or not they are going to have a good working relationship with that agency or with that freelancer because they knew that they were entering into a relationship so if you had gotten to that point chances are you have the skills and capabilities and experience to deliver on the proposal the question then becomes is the client going to have a good experience with you do they think that you're going to listen do they think that you will be able to take feedback well and essentially throughout that working relationship could be a few weeks could be a few years are they going to have a great experience and all of that is down to personalities and whether or not they think they'll like you so i think you get the concept here that networking can be quite transactional and so therefore feels a little bit artificial no and it's difficult to scale. I think in your own experience, you've probably realized that business is personal to a degree and that you'll do business with people and brands that you like, but how can you now take those things and scale that within your own businesses? Now, what I've learned in my own business journey is if you remove the transactional element and you focus on developing relationships and getting people to like you and like what you do, over time, that dynamic builds a community. Now, I know this because in the work we do at Ultra Education, we we really leaned into the value we could add to the kids and the parents on our programs. So what would happen is if there was an opportunity to go to an amazing workspace, if there was something that we knew would support that kid's business, either through more sales, it could have been them speaking at an event, it could have been a feature in a local or national newspaper or radio station, then we would go out of our way to make that happen. And that's because I knew the success of our business would be determined upon the success of our kid entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs. So commercially, I knew that if I could make these kids really successful as entrepreneurs, that it would shine a light on us as an organization. But from their point of view, we were just adding value. And did we want them to win? Absolutely. Did we know that in the round we would win too? True. Absolutely. Did the parents and did the kids know that them doing well would shine a light on what Ultra was doing? Yes, they did. But we both knew being in a reciprocal ecosystem where if we won, they won, that that would benefit everybody. Now, if you repeat that a number of times and we repeated it scores of times and if you keep repeating that until it's been done hundreds of times what we discovered was we had a community on our hands we have a whatsapp group with hundreds of parents who would share stories of their young entrepreneurs achievements and we would let them know about programs and things that we've got coming up and a few years back as we would add new parents to the whatsapp group we had existing parents saying things like welcome to the ultra family which wasn't a term that we had come up with and in a recent focus group with our parents we'd ask them why did they do that and why do they regard themselves as part of an ultra family and they said because the value exchange doesn't feel transactional and that we look out for their kids as much as they look out for their kids if you pull that out into any business environment regardless of the product or service you're offering if you are looking out for your customers as much as you can they will feel the love and they will want to reciprocate that by either evangelizing your product or service telling other people referring and as anyone in business knows the number one way in which you want want to market your product is through word of mouth because it provides social proof and it's free. Now, if you don't believe me and my tiny entrepreneur story, then go to Google and type in community and your favorite brand name. So if you typed in community and Nike, community Google, community Apple, community Uber, community Amazon, you will see that all of these brands are spending millions of pounds trying to develop communities because they realize that the power of community is invaluable and that from those communities, you get super users, you get evangelists who will really help to take your brand to the next level. And the only reason why I'm majoring on this communities element is because we've been able to do it as a small organization when I thought that it was only huge brands that could have the power of community at their fingertips, but it's just not true. So to layer some reality over all of this, if you are just starting out or you are a small business and you've not thought about any of this, then I'm not saying not to go to any networking events. If that is what is keeping the lights on, what I am saying is that there is a better way of doing it and that you could probably expend your energy in parallel into a strategy that would help you to get a better return for your time input over the course of your business's growth. So what will happen is you will transact in order to keep the lights on. You do that to create enough surplus or profit so that you can add additional value back to your customers or clients. You rinse and repeat that value add back to your audience. And if you keep doing that, 
organically you will create a community. And just like we have, maybe one day your customers and clients will refer to you as their family, which really means that they love whatever it is they're receiving from you and they'll share that love with their family and friends and their networks. Now, I wish I was smart enough to have deliberately planned this strategy out for the last eight years. I wasn't. It almost happened by accident. The only thing that I focused on was how can we add as much value to the people that we are working with as possible. And I monitored the effect of that value and became fascinated by how the market reacted so that we could become more intentional about doing more of it. So hopefully this video will save you the eight years that it took me to learn this strategy going from networking to communities and will have given you some actionable strategies that you can use today to get the same effect. But have you been able to build a community in your businesses or are you part of a business community that you really love? Do let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you on the next video, Ultra and out.